This big mirror. If someone can tell us, we obviously you're not watching this to know how to do it because we don't know what we're doing. You're just watching it to give yourselves encouragement. Why not you to do, do it? it. <laughs> yeah. Hi everyone. I'm sitting out here in the veggie patch. But what I'm doing today is I've got four trays of pink fringed ornamental kale. We got totally sidetracked. I'm still planting the kale, but we thought we'd dig up the dahlia tubers because we, we just thought we might do that right now. I haven't even labelled them. So I'm just going to sit them where they were. These were like tiny, one tiny little tuber. And look at it all. We're so amazed. Are you amazed, Mia Moore? Nah. Oh, no. You're the one really excited. <laughs> so we're going to dig them out, sit them there. I'll wash them, let them dry off, and then we'll... Oh, I didn't go that close, yeah. We're being very gentle because it it's our first time doing this. It's so exciting. That looks like a big clump too. It does. Lots of grass. Look. Oh, dahlias are so fun. They're so gorgeous. They're so easy to grow. They're so pretty. And how fun when you dig them out. Now we have no idea what to do next. Ooh. Oh. No, I, I planted potatoes in here. <laughs> I've actually got to dig potatoes out of here too. Oh, yeah, 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 you could. <laughs> That's a bit confusing, isn't it? This looks nice too. Hold it up and I'll put it on camera. Oh, there's an earthworm on it. Cute. They're pretty nice, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, people, this is so Will exciting. You, come off from here. here we go. We'll come back to it later this afternoon and store it, I guess. So I've made some tags for the um, dahlias. While we were waiting for these dahlias to dry out, my daughter and I went down the street and we met Kat, who's just opened a new shop in town and she's a hatter, so she creates hats. And she takes orders from all over the world and it was just so interesting. And she gave us a demo about how to make a hat. And this is just some of her store. Well, her store is quite tiny, but it really seems fit for purpose for what she's doing. So I asked Kat how long has she been making hats for, and she said it's only been a year. And it was really brought on by COVID. She's a musician and her and her partner can't travel anymore just because of the COVID restrictions. So I guess she's kind of recreated herself and she's still doing something creative and she's loving it. And here she's got the steamer. So she said that this is what softens the felt so that she can shape it. And then once it dries again, it stays in shape. I think she said this is called blocking. 
And interestingly, she's just found out her great grandmother was a hat maker, which is really cool. And back in those days, um, people would buy one hat and they'd have it for life. And each town would have a hat maker and if it got dirty or got out of shape you'd take it in to be cleaned or reshapen or fixed up and you'd just have this one beautiful piece that lasted forever well maybe not forever but for your lifetime and she was saying that an akubra takes 15 minutes to make and i've got one and it was like 220 dollars for this akubra hat that i've got her hats take she said anywhere between three and a half hours to five to six hours depending what people want she can pretty much customize it however you like and she ships worldwide I'll pop her website down in the description box of this video so you can have a look this was her first day opening too that we popped in So the first hat you ever made? Yep. How did it look? <laughs> it looks exactly how I wanted it to look. It did? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so you've got the knack, like a natural knack. Well, I have an amazing mentor who's taught me everything. Uh, everything I know and then um, I made up the rest. <laughs> that is really cool. Yeah. I love it. Here Kat was explaining that she uses a soldering iron to customise hats even further like to make them look rustic or to burn pictures in. You can have a look on her website at examples. Now I'm doing a voiceover because she had music playing in her store and I can't use that on uh, YouTube, which is a bit of a shame, but I told her I'd probably have to voiceover. And here's the finished piece. Isn't that awesome? Thank you so much for showing us, Kat. And now we better get back to these dahlias. Okay, we're here ready to start dividing dahlias. First problem I've got is I do have a bit of a situation here. It's pretty, um, what do I do? Do I just like cut it? Because I know I need, in, in a blog post that I looked, that I read, it was really detailed and I'll link that below if I can find it again. But she had each section labelled, like the tuba, the neck, and then, I don't know, the little bit at the top. And it has to have that little bit at the top, like this here. So there's the tuba, the neck, and the little bit at the top. It has to have that, or it's not going to regrow again, apparently. So, maybe I should have chosen something that was a bit smaller. Like this little one. To me, that doesn't look any easier, to be honest. Well, this is already challenging and I haven't even... This one, look, this one's a little bit more... Okay, let's go with that. Oh, but this one's my pretty one. I really like this one. I don't want to wreck it. Okay, let's just do it. Let's just see what happens. Let's just cut. I always thought being a surgeon would be fun, so... Now we're doing surgery on... Dahlias. So, I think what I need to do is maybe just cut it a bit like maybe just cut down between a few and hope that I don't bugger that up oh yeah there's that yucky one I cut it off it's buggered now anyway sometimes I think you've got to just do that I'm making this crap up probably don't watch this to find out exactly how to do it because guess what I don't know. So that's got the tuba, the neck, and I'm assuming that this bit here is the piece with the information in it to grow a new tuba. The other thing that I learnt was the tuba needs to be at least as large as, I think it was a, a triple A battery. So as long as it's that big, it's going to be okay and grow again. But if it's not that big, it may not produce. So this one here that I'm holding looks good to me. I'm going to try and 
well it's actually got a, a, a crack in in the neck so it may not do anything I'm gonna come back to that because I don't know this one's a bit weird but it's got lots of like stuff on it to grow so I feel like I feel like those are good and I'm probably not doing these very neat am I I'm sorry that one's gonna be yucky on it Just cut it off Oh, the other thing, yeah, was cut the little end bits, like, really tidy them up. So, ta-da! Cut the little tails off. Okay, I'm going to hope that I'm doing this good. Okay, I got two. <laughs> if, I, if I get nothing else, I got two. That'll be right. I do think I might have snapped a few necks on this one though. It's actually pretty hard, like getting them out of the ground. Ooh, that's got yucky stuff. Look, people of the internet, what is this? What does that mean? Is it something that I shouldn't keep touching my scissors with? back real quick <laughs> so it's the tuber then the neck and then the crown the crown's that bit that I'm trying to make sure I get a little bit on every tuber um, and this blog post I'm gonna definitely link it I've just found it it's really really good I might even do a quick um, like screen recording and just show you um, yeah she says that you need at least like a centimeter of that crown on each tuber and some of mine don't have it but anyway, first year trying, and I'm sure when you split a dahlia clump, I'm sure that you don't get 100% from that, unless you're like super expert, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, and then I've read some other things as well, like these clumps that are just so condensed, like that one. A few people have said you just drop it on the ground and it just kind of separates. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't want to break all the necks and then have nothing. So anyway, I'm just going to um, film this and maybe I'll just speed it up and then just slow down in the bits where I think there's something to say. Um, but otherwise I'll put a timestamp of when I'm sort of at the end so that you can just um, go to that. I'll put it up on the screen. Here, look. I'm not one of those uncos that points to the screen and there's nothing there. <laughs> so I'll pop it there. If you don't want to watch all of this happen, just go straight to that spot and we'll roll on. Okay. See ya. Got Moroni, he's checking. I know. What do you think? Well, I think we're going to lose it anyway because it doesn't really have too much of a neck. That's well, n none of these have a neck either. Like, how I don't know, really. I'll show the people. These ones are just like round balls, it's almost like there's no neck. It's like the well, this one's got a little bit of a neck, but some of them are just sort of like connected straight to the crown so I don't know like is this normal and this one's just
me being the expert and everything, you know. Why not the next? Oh, I just I mean. cut the rod off. Look. This one, I'm pretty sure there's no nothing left on it. Well, probably not rod. It's just the thing, you know, like it. Well, I know some of them had that ring, but they were pink. I think it might be just plant material. Like it had. There were some of these that kind of like this. See how it's got a pink tinge to it? Uh huh. And the little ring on the inside was wetness, but it was pink. Yeah, I would like to know what this pink means. If someone can tell us, we... Obviously you're not watching this to know how to do it, because we don't know what we're doing. You're just watching it to give yourselves encouragement. Why not to do, do it? it. <laughs> yeah. But any experts out there, please leave a comment. And if we did a terrible job, you can leave us a thumbs down. <laughs> I want like this. Yeah, or I'll just like a halfway mark one. <laughs> Uh, the kids communicate in thumbs up or thumbs down, don't they? Mm -hmm. They go like this, or this, and if they're not sure, they go like this. Mm -hmm. How sad to grow up in a world where that's how you tell people what you do and don't like. But I mean, you can. But it's normal for them, so it's not like they lived in any other era and now they're missing out. This is mm -hmm. just life. I picked one of these out of this box and it was covered in mold. No mold, no. Well, I obviously cut it all off, like mm -hmm. cut just through that whole piece out. Mm -hmm. But it was pretty bad. You'll probably be able to find it in there somewhere. I don't want to find. Where would it? I don't know. Could be fine. I think we're back. So we finished dividing what we thought we could do. It's actually really hard. I I found it kind of stressful. I didn't enjoy this job. And the other thing, I, the mistake I made is I didn't disinfect these between each tuber, which I'm pretty sure if you're disinfecting your tools, you probably should be doing. And Moroni, you think that too. Well, yeah. he knows that because, you know, I didn't wait for him. Anyway, Moroni had a go and he enjoyed it. So I think this is your job now, isn't it? Yeah. We got a thumbs up. So he's going to be the dahlia divider, but we're also going to try leaving some in the ground, I think, as well, and see what happens. Anything that we've got a lot of, we just, because if we can store them in the ground and not have to lift them, that saves us so much trouble. But this is all the waste. So they're tubers that either didn't end up with a neck or they had already sort of snapped. Ones that were rotten. Um, some of those clumps were so tight, I just kind of twisted them a bit to get them apart. And so, of course, it yeah, we had to sacrifice some tubers. But what I tried to, t tried to do was really kind of be ruthless. Anything that had rot, anything that I didn't think had a crown on it. Just really trying to save the best stuff. And everything's packaged up in its own little package with sawdust. In the hope that if we get rot in one of them, it doesn't yeah, spread yeah, to yeah. everything, hopefully. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that stressful video. Um, I'm sure there's going to be people that have figured out things we did wrong already. We actually would really like to know. Just be nice about it, please. Um, I had a comment the other day, someone called me too dainty for this business. I was like, thank you for calling me dainty. Never had that compliment before. Um, because I won't use... What's that stuff called? Oasis Floral Foam, because I don't like the chemicals in it. And that's made me dainty. But I felt quite chuffed about it, actually. And maybe he's right. But if I don't ever plan to use it, then what does it matter? So, because I use the, um, I either don't use it at all, or I use the, what's that other stuff? I should know, because I did a video on it. <sighs> Agri-wool. Anyway, I'm going, I've got to clean up this big mess. And I have a child that wants dinner. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. We will put something pretty at the end of this video for you, I'm sure. Okay, see yous. But no time for the mic. I just got, there's a young girl down the road who sells trail loads of poo for $30. So I've ordered one. But look behind me. Look at that sky. There is about to be a huge, huge storm. And I'm so excited. I love storms.